I decided to record myself making ClinCheck modifications on just a random case. When I send a case into Invisalign, I actually don't give them that much uh, information. I work off this because it's a great diagnostic tool. So what do we have here? Uh, we have a class one bilaterally, edge to edge anterior. We have a little lower crowding, not much upper crowding. So this is a good example of a case with a bolt in discrepancy because it's a class one, but it's edge to edge anterior. And the culprit really are the laterals, especially this lateral being small. You can even check here on the Bolton table, and there you see a mandibular excess of um, 1.86. So that's quite a large Bolton discrepancy. That's why the ClinCheck comes back with IPR on the bottom. But I'll tell you how I would approach this case. I'm going to modify now. All right, now, first thing, is this occlusion, first I'm going to take the attachments off so I can see better. This occlusion right now looks fine to me, and the patient reported no issue. This ClinCheck has minor movement. This is not necessary. It only is asking more of the aligner, and usually these kind of little innocent movements on molars can end up not playing out and leading to, to uh, posterior open bites. Because if the movement doesn't play out on a stubborn tooth, a multi-rooted tooth, that force can be driven in an intrusive fashion. So I right click, make unmovable, make unmovable, make unmovable. You could also have this in your settings, which I, I kind of do, but sometimes they don't see it. I'm not moving any molars. I don't have to because that's not his problem. Now, looking at the rest, there's some little minor tweaks of the premolars. I mean, maybe we want to get that a little bit more solid than what he has now. I don't have a problem with that. We will need attachments for that. I am going to take the attachments off the teeth here. Uh, so features, remove attachment, remove attachment, remove attachment. Because there's no movement on those teeth and the retention will be fine as it is with most cases, unless the teeth are like really, really short. So I took those off. Now, in terms of the overall scheme, the idea here is that they are trying to align the lower teeth and then align the upper teeth, but I don't like moving teeth in. I'll move teeth inward if they're sticking out a lot. Now, I already foreshadowed to the patient that some restorative was going to be needed. And let's see to what extent. I'm removing all the IPR. Temporar These teeth are moving in real time right now. So you're going to see almost like an anterior crossbite or certainly anterior prematurities. Now, I don't want that. You can see how those teeth virtually seem to melt into each other. So I am going to make some room around the culprit of the Bolton discrepancy. And because, you know, orthodontics doesn't solve every problem. The etiology here is the small laterals in part. I won't make as much here because that seems to be not as narrow, number 10, as number 7. Okay, now I have, I'm moving the laterals out, and now I might do a little bit of IPR. And when I pick a spot for IPR, I'm going to look and see where I have a pre-existing dark triangle. So this one, yes. Here we have a pre-existing dark triangle. That's a much easier space to do the interproximal reduction. Here, in the B, I can do it. Yes, I'll just wait until later in the treatment to do the IPR here. So it ends up I am doing that IPR, and now you see I have clearance. I noticed something earlier. Let's just see how these teeth are being moved. All right, now look at how the cingulum area, number 25 is moving in almost bodily. But, and that's nice on paper, on computer, but it doesn't really work that well in the mouth. I would rather the tooth move with a more predictable type of 
tip. So what I'm going to do is actually remove some of that lingual root torque. And I'm seeing it everywhere. And I'm okay because we're not moving. The key is we're not moving the teeth a long distance. So why not let it move without the torque? Because when you're putting torque on that tooth, when you don't really have to, remember, this is not an extraction case, obviously, there's going to be more side effect to those back teeth. This is one of the reasons why I don't have a lot of posterior open bites. Now, hard to see, but there's a little bit more of a tipping as the teeth come in. I'm going to even remove more of it. You see how the crown edge, the incisal edge is more the leading movement now, moving more. Same with the central. All right. So now let's see where we are. Notice that little change I made actually led to more overjet. So I'm going to just lessen the amount of the IPR now because I don't need to have overjet where I'm starting edge to edge. Let's see. The dark triangles are inevitable. All right. And then the rest of the Kunchek looks okay. Now the extrusion, do I need to extrude these teeth? Well, I'm going to extrude 25, but I try to limit extrusion wherever I can. So I'm removing the extrusion on the teeth that don't really critically need it. Okay. And then let's see if my occlusion will still look reasonable. So there's still some extrusion by virtue of the root angulation, but less than there was before. And the occlusion still looks okay anteriorly. If I don't have anterior guidance, I can always back it up a little bit. In fact, maybe what I'll do is make a little bit more, less space here. Let's look at the midlines. That looks on. So I'm going to keep it bilateral. All right. I think this is more to my liking and more predictable. I hope this is helpful for you as you might apply it to your own cases.